Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for staying with us for the 2020 Hermana Virtual Conference. Today, we're really excited to bring to you this incredible production team on the new show um, airing on the El Rey Network called Maria. It is a show that is about the news of the day, the issues of the day, and how they relate to our Latino community nationwide. And what's really special about the show, other than the wonderful host, Maria Cardona, who was our 2014 Hermana awardee, um, the production team is an all Latina team. And so for us, this just means the absolute world. And we're so excited to have them with us today. We've got Maria Cardona, the host and executive producer, Gloria Medel Solomon, executive producer, Arlene Santana, segment producer, and Viviana Vigil, segment producer. So ladies, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time with us today. First, I just kind of want to go around the around the horn. Tell us about yourself. How did you become the person that you are today? What's your origin story? So, Maria, let's start with you. <laughs> thank you, Amy. First of all, I want to thank you for your leadership. So many years, we've worked on so many projects together. And I was so thrilled when you decided to join me as a co-host for the first show of Maria on the El Rey Network. It was such an honor to have you. And I also want to thank Mana for the incredible work that you all do to raise up these issues, all of these issues that we're talking about on the Maria show. You have been dealing with them for decades uh, within the Latina community and especially how they relate to Latinas. You know, this show, I think, has been a long time in coming. And if it wasn't going to be me, it was going to be another Latina. As you know, I have been a political commentator on television for many, many years. I cut my teeth in politics. I've been dealing in politics for all of my career. And I have specifically focused on the intersection of politics, policy, and the Latino community. This year, I think it is the perfect time for a show like Maria. We're going to be 32 million strong in the November election, the largest voting ethnic bloc in the country, a record number of Latinos that are eligible to vote at a time when our country and our community specifically is feeling attacked on so many fronts by so many of our elected officials, including the president of the United States. And so what the focus of the Maria show is, um, is to ensure that we bring these issues to the forefront of our community, mobilize and energize and excite and inspire our community to get out to vote, not just for the sake of voting, which is critical in and of itself, but to demonstrate that that one single act of civic participation is emblematic of a, an incredible power that our community can have if we all go to the ballot and exercise that power together. You know, I am born and raised in LA to Mexican immigrant parents. My dad is from Cuernavaca, Mexico, and my mom is from Guanajuato. So growing up, it was just, you know, the main thing for my parents was like, get an education, get an education. Um, I have to say that I had no idea of the entertainment industry growing up. This was not even something I ever even saw as a career choice or an option. And it was just by chance that I happened to be going to a friend's Sweet 16, uh, a very Anglo friend of mine, whose aunt happened to be a producer on a big soap opera. And they took us to the behind the scenes of Young and the Restless. Hmm. And to me, it was like, oh my God, what is this? I had no idea that these jobs even existed, which is why I think it's so important um, that you do these types of things because I feel like if you don't see it, you don't dream it and you don't even know about it. I had no idea that all these industry jobs existed. And that was kind of my first like eye-opening experience. And I left there thinking, I want to do this. Like I want to make TV and movies. Like that was what I wanted to do. Cut to, I ended up going to the School of Film and Television at Loyola Marymount University. Uh, I'm a proud graduate of LMU. And that really set me off on my career because one of the biggest things I did while I was there was take advantage of internships and mentorship. And I think that was the most pivotal thing in my career, um, the internships, because I was fortunate, very fortunate enough to find a paid internship 
um, at Sony. And that really started my career because, you know, I think what a lot of us face now is you graduate and it's like, how do you get that first job? And, and I think internship is the key, the key thing into any industry, not just this one. So that that's been the main opportunity I took advantage of, you know, while I was in school. And then subsequent to that, just mentorship has been such a key part to my career. Exciting. Arlene, how about you? Amy, you are a fellow Tejana. I am also a, a Tejana. I was born and raised in a small town in South Texas, five minutes uh, away from the Mexican border. So I am a Mexicana, Americana through and through. I moved to LA when I um, graduated college. It was something that I had dreamed about my entire life. I wanted to be in the industry. I wanted to write, produce, act, host. I wanted to do it all. And um, as much as my parents didn't want me to leave the nest, they were brave enough to drive me out here uh, just with my books and clothes. They dropped me off at, at my stoop at the apartment. They didn't even go inside. It was so hard for them to drop their daughter off in this uh, brand new land, this adventure, that they said goodbye to me at the stoop and they wished me well. And to me, that was um, some, that's a memory that I'm never gonna forget. And um, I've worked my butt off to um, to get every single job opportunity that I've ever had w with that with that memory in mind that my parents um, were relying on me to sort of achieve their dreams as well. Um, I've been working as a host um, in the entertainment industry for over 10 years, and I reached my highest dream, my highest goal. I, I got an opportunity to be a host on the E Network, and when I got there. Um, I became incredibly dissatisfied because I wasn't creating content that mattered. And when I chose to leave, that was also the time that Donald Trump announced his uh, presidential candidacy. It was back in 2015 when he attacked Mexicans uh, for being rapists and, and uh, murderers. And that really hit a chord with me because I felt that not only was he uh, insulting Mexicans, Latinos as a whole, but he was insulting my family. Because I, like I said, I grew up on the border. I know what immigration can do to the Texas, to Texas as a state, but also to this country, how it enhances it and how it makes it better. So for me to be part of the show, I know that uh, the, the mantra, the, the, the code that we go by is that politics is personal. This show is so incredibly personal to me. My husband sometimes tells me that I take it too personal, but I think that that's my superpower. Um, and I'm incredibly blessed to be um, part of a team with incredibly strong women. We challenge each other, we push each other, we disagree. Sometimes we we go back and forth on these um, on these issues. What what way do we tell them? What what angle do we take? Um, and I know that each and every one of us were all so incredibly passionate because we know how these topics, we know how these issues affect other people on a personal level, and that people are constantly being. Um, being left behind when, with conversations about healthcare, about education. My nephews right now are in college and I'm worried about how much debt they're about to get into. Even that topic, tuition-free college, affordable uh, healthcare. My father uh, passed away last year from pancreatic cancer. The healthcare system to me, I know is broken. And so for me to be a part of this show, for me to continue to fight for my family and for um, as many people as I can is, is an honor and, and it's a privilege to me. So um, I'm just incredibly, happy and, and, and honored to be a part of this team. We are so sorry for the loss of your father. And we know that you're making him proud though, every single day. I mean, this show is really a testament to that work and, and your work shines through. How about you, Viviana? How, how did you kind of come up through the ranks and, and find yourself here? Yeah, I'm pretty lucky to be here, right? If you heard these women already, they're incredible. I got chat, I got all charged up listening to them. Um, I, like Lori, I'm a Los Angeles native. I'm like 15, 18 generation Chicana. I don't really know. We go back that far. Um, my family was a big part of the Chicano movement here in Los Angeles. And my dad actually, one of seven kids, was the only child in his, fa his family to go to college, but he went all the way. He got a PhD. He was a professor. He is a professor in cultural anthropology, Chicano studies professor, and urban gang expert. So my whole life, I've been surrounded with anthropologists and academia and all of that, and really sucked that in. Um, went to college at USC, sociology major. Came out as a county social worker for Los Angeles County. I was a children's social worker, taking people's kids away, giving people's kids back, wow. doing that kind of work. 
I've always really had a passion for social justice. My point of getting into that job was I wanted to help people navigate a system that was set up for them to fail. So I wanted to help these families reunite with their children, get the resources they need to have success. And while I was doing that, I, as a hobby, decided to sort of jump into this contest to become a TV host for an hour. I ended up losing the contest, but getting the job. And so for five years, I moonlighted as a TV host. And then I was a full-time social worker during the day to the point where I had to eventually decide what I wanted to do. So I kept up my social justice and my passion for, for giving back through mentoring and volunteership, but really went full force with uh, television and, and, and hosting, always really trying to bring it back into my passions, which are social justice, but I ended up in this entertainment and luxury lifestyle world, hitting a lot of red carpets, interviewing every star you could imagine. Sometimes these conversations would get political, which was not allowed until the Me Too movement. Now you can talk about it on the carpet. Well, now with COVID, there's no carpets, but you know, I really was unable to discuss the things that I really was passionate about. And over the years, and, and like Arlene, I, I'm older than her, so I've been in it even longer. And there is a dissatisfaction you get of feeling like you're not doing what you're really meant to do. So for the last couple of years, I've been trying to get into different genres that I'm passionate about, veganism, you know, uh, immigrants' rights. And the door would close in my face every single time. And I knew I had to keep the faith that it was just going to be the right person that is going to see my value. And that was Gloria. Thank you, Gloria. So she allowed me to get on board with this. Um, and that's, that's you know, the history of how I've gotten everywhere that I've gotten. It's somebody that I've met introducing me to someone else. In this case, Arlene is the one that told Gloria about me. And so I'm really blessed and lucky to be here. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I'm doing something purposeful finally. That is incredible. And you brought up a really important point that kind of leads us into the next topic of discussion. You talked about doors getting slammed in your face. Um, and whether we're talking about the entertainment industry, whether we're talking about politics, Maria, we're talking about white male dominated mm -hmm. industries, right? Yes. And so to have this powerhouse group of Latinas together, you know, what? why is it so important for us to be our own storytellers? And then, of course, what do we hope to accomplish with the show, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so maybe Maria, you can start with that one. Um, what do we hope to accomplish and why is it important for us to be our own storytellers? Sure, so we always, we always look at a situation and a, a, an idea or um, a problem through our own perspective, right? That's, that's the human nature. That's the perspective that you bring to the table. If you don't see decision makers, influencers, people who are making all of the policy that is affecting all of us, if you don't see people that look like you or people from your community at those tables making those decisions, you're going to at one point assume that those decisions either don't affect you or that those decision makers are not taking your community and your perspective um, into account. And that could not, the first one could not be further from the truth. The second one, yes. And that's the problem. That's why people who look like us and people who come from our communities have to get involved. Because in all of those back rooms where all of the powerhouses are getting together and making those deals and doing those negotiations, every single policy that gets formulated is going to affect our community. The ideal is to have our folks in those rooms, at those tables, making those decisions along with everyone else who is making those decisions, right? That's why it is so important, and, and this is something that we deal with on the show, that's why it's so important for Latinos and Latinas to be running for elected office, right? To be elected as members of Congress, as senators, hopefully one day as president of the United States because they will then be able to bring to the table the perspective of a community that in less than 20 years is going to be a third of the American population. And for way too long, our perspective has been ignored, has not been included, and as such, our community have been at a huge disadvantage. And we are seeing now what that means in the era of COVID, 
and the recession that is caused by it, we are seeing Latinos and Latinas disproportionately negatively affected by both of those tragedies. And those are issues that are have been a long time in coming. And, it, and it's not just us, right? Our African-American brothers and sisters, our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, all of these issues are issues that we talk about on the Maria show, right? It's going to take all of us coming together and understanding that until the halls of power reflect what this country looks like, so many communities, including our own, are going to be as, at a disadvantage. Oh yeah, did it take coming to an El Rey network to really find that opportunity to tell stories the way you wanted to tell them from the vantage point of our community? So prior to doing the show at El Rey, I had been at NBC Universal and I was part of the team that launched Mundos, which was their very uh, US Latino targeted cable channel that eventually became Universo, which is still on one of their cable networks today. Uh, I launched their reality programming, their music programming, their news programming. So it was, I've kind of been, I've been doing this for a while. So it was very exciting when El Rey came calling because I always called these my passion projects. Anytime I did documentary specials or news specials um, and, all of them were very much focused on U.S. Latinos in the U.S. So to me, I couldn't believe that a show like this had never been done before because <laughs> it's something that is so necessary. And it is so, you know, we're always trying to see, well, we have, you know, 32 million strong voting, but why don't more vote? And I genuinely believe it's because it, people grow apathetic. You know, they're afraid of politics. They don't want to be talking about it or they can't relate to it. And again, we go back to the politics is personal. You know, the goal of the show is to really be able to bring these topics to people and show them why it matters to them. Why does this matter in your day to day life? Why is it important to be represented? Something as simple as, you know, you don't see us on TV or films. You know, I just saw this movie last night. And it was so disheartening to see that all the Latino characters were either gang members, cartel members. I mean, nothing to look up to at all. Like they were all the bad people. And it really makes you think like, wow, what is going on? You know, we're such a strong demographic, but yet I feel like we need to, you know, be more vocal and demand that representation. Like Maria said, Yes, in, on the political landscape, but not only that, in media. I mean, Maria is a trailblazer in what she does. She's one of very few Latinas that, that do this and is, forget about having her own show. I mean, that that's a first, you know? Yeah. So I think that's definitely what's been super important is to, to change that landscape, to really bring these issues um, to the forefront and to be able to do it in an accessible manner where people can really understand like, wow, yeah, that does matter. Or to help explain things to people on why you should care about a certain issue. Right. Arlene, does it kind of feel, you know, do you, does, do you feel it every day that you're breaking new ground uh, on the show and with this work? And how does that sort of play into how the development process works right because it's almost like buying your you know buying into the crazy hype but at the same time staying grounded to really produce that great content um i think that there's definitely a sense that we're doing something that's never been done before and as far as the content i mean i talked to my family back home in texas and they've never seen anything like this the kind of conversations that we're having from the lgbtq episodes to reproductive justice um to uh, mental health um, some of these topics are taboo in our culture and so um for me the goal is having these conversations so that my family gets it because that's the closest thing for me right um, so if I can get them to understand these topics, then I'm really getting the job done, I feel like. So um, one of my main priorities whenever I tackle one of these topics is like, what is the story that we want to tell? It's it's fine and dandy to talk about these topics on a general scale, but when we hyper-focus on how this affects 
you on an individual individual level, you really start to connect the pieces. And we're up against some very uh, very substantial tactics. I mean, I think that um, there's this there's this tactic where Latinos, the Latinx community, were were made to feel less than, and that's what Donald Trump is, has done. And so when you do that, it immediately sets you apart and that you, like, you're not part of the process. So I think encouraging people to see that the, the power that we do have and how these issues uh, can be, um, can, we can connect to these issues and how we have the power to change these issues. That to me is, um, is inspirational. And I think that um, Senator Bernie Sanders for me is, is a big inspiration because he was able to connect with the Latino community. I think of Nevada and how, how, much, how much Latinos came out for him. Nevada being one of the, uh, having the, some of the strongest healthcare system in the country. And yet union workers came out by the numbers to vote for him. And, I, and, and to me that really, um, that really resonated with me because I'm like, if these people are going out to vote for somebody who's completely trying to dismantle the the, the healthcare system and they have the best healthcare possible, then that really tells you a lot about where we are. And um, I'm just encouraged by the conversations that we're having and I, and I feel incredibly passionate. So Viviana, as personal uh, as all of this is, you know, it's not just the politics that are personal. This is your, your work and your livelihood. And how do, how do you balance that out, um, you know, to be able to to come through with, with the work that you do? I'll be honest, it doesn't feel like work at all. It does not feel like work. I am having a great time every day. I am learning so much. It is incredibly inspiring. Um, I find Maria to be one of the most powerful women, full of grace. Having hosted many television shows myself, this woman is amazing. She is so kind and graceful. I, I long to be like her. And then the work ethic that Arlene and Gloria have, are, it's, it's just, it, it makes it a really uh, wonderful place to work. And I think as women, we've all worked in non-wonderful places. Um, mm. But go, going back to like, how can we feel that we have a voice if we don't see our voices you know, represented, if we don't see people actually listen to, listening to the voices? And I'm glad Arlene broke, uh, brought up Bernie Sanders. And I, I just think, because I'm with her, I was really inspired by Bernie Sanders. And, and I know politically, a lot of us disagree on this show, but I love that we're all having this conversation because just mm -hmm. like Maria said, this is the most important time to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And we all want the same thing. We all want the same thing. We just need to figure out how to bridge that gap. And I think this show does it. I just want to close because we have so many um, girls in our Hermanitas program across the country, um, girls who are in middle and high school who receive mentoring through our programming. And I would just love for you to take just a couple of seconds to talk about what you would go back and tell your younger self right now, kind of the, you know, if you, could go back and, and talk to maybe your 11 year old or, or 15 year old self and you know what is life what does life hold for you what would you remind her of to hold on to 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 stay strong and keep working and anyone can go <laughs> I'll, I'll go first since uh since the room jumped at it i you know one thing that i remember it's so hard when you're young um and sometimes i feel like my confidence was better when i was young as you get older and life throws its rocks at you you kind of have to rebuild but you're so fresh in the innocence of, of just truth mm -hmm. when you're that age every single thing you do informs you and preps you for the next no matter how insignificant it seems. That little book report you're doing in front of the class helps prepare you for public speaking, each opportunity, each person that you meet. So take everything serious, but enjoy life, but know that every experience is helping to shape you. And if you can see us here on the panel, see yourselves in whatever job that you wanna do, know that it's gonna be a struggle, know you're gonna have to throw some, I don't know if we can say that word, but you know, it, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be an easy path, but it's an enjoyable path. And life is, if it was easy, it wouldn't be that fun. Things don't feel so good if you don't earn them or have to fight for them. So hopefully you won't have to fight as hard as Maria had to fight to get where she is. And hopefully uh, <laughs> generations following all of us will have a little less of a struggle, but still have the passion and the ganas. One of my uh, favorite things that I loved to do when I was young was read. I grew up in a very small town, so there wasn't a lot to do. And that was the best way that I could escape reading. And through that, I was able to discover all of the things that I was really passionate about. And I was lucky to find out what I was passionate about at an early age. But I also know that that doesn't happen for everybody. 
Didn't happen uh, a lot for of me. people struggle with trying to figure out what it is that they want to do. And I think it's important because once you get older and you start to work those 40 hours, if you don't love what you do, mm-hmm. it's going to be real hard. It's going to yeah. be tough. So um, really doing some um, some self-evaluation on what your passions are. Um, what you love to do, what you, where you want to go, where do you want to live, uh, all those things. And, and, and to me, and I, Gloria touched on this a little bit. Um, the first, the first, uh, way to achieve your dream is taking the first step. That's Mm -hmm. it. One little step. So Mm -hmm. even if you take that first step, know that, that, um, you're making the right moves and, um, you have, your ancestors behind you, you have all the Latinas here right now encouraging you, we want you to succeed and we want you to do more than us, be greater, achieve higher than us. We want you, we want that for you. And I hope that they that they know that. I think, um, Amy, one of the things that I would highlight to um, young girls and, and, and I always try to whenever I speak to them is, you know, one of the things that really helped me is to and, and this is sometimes really hard to do, to have faith in people. I was always very, very lucky and blessed to have found angels and mentors along the way in, in every community. And, it, you know, I think today our young Latinas are lucky that they can be surrounded by not just other young Latinas, but they can look up to this panel of amazing women and see themselves. I didn't have a whole lot of that when I was coming up in, especially in in politics, but I was blessed by amazing mentors that were mostly male. Um, One of them in particular was an African-American man by the name of Ron Brown, who, you know, blazed trails in his own right. Um, and he took me under his wing and everyone around him also did the same. Um, but it took me having faith, right? Taking that leap of faith, um, that this was going to open doors for me, even though that wasn't an obvious thing at the time. Right. And so what I would tell young Latinas is have faith in people. And especially in yourself, because you have to have faith in yourself in order to make those leaps of faith that you're going to have to do in order to get to where you want to go. So for me, it would be, you know, step out of your comfort zone for a really long time. I knew what I was very good at and just wanted to do that. I was very afraid to step out of my comfort zone because I'm very type A. So if I'm not good at something, I don't want to do it. (laughs) What I would tell my younger self that I've learned now is to embrace that little fear and help that light that fire under you step out of your comfort zone. And you know what, it's okay not to know something. I actually had my mentor years ago when I was first starting out tell me, you know, it's okay not to know something. You, You know, he was like, he jokingly said, fake it till you make it because it was in a production scenario. And I didn't really know some of the ins and outs early on of like, you know, when we're doing concert stuff, I didn't know all the audio and all this stuff. And he's like, never tell somebody you don't know. He's like, you know what you do? You go, you figure it out. Find out. You find out. Fear is not the bad guy, Mm -hmm. but that thing that keeps you going. Well, thank you all so much. This has been an absolute treat. Um, And I want to remind all of our conference participants, all of you received a Maria button in your conference bags. And so we'd love to see you follow us on social media at Mana National on Twitter and Facebook and hashtag politics is personal so we can see you and your support for the Maria show. So help me thank our guests, Maria, Gloria, Arlene and Viviana for a fantastic conversation. We're so lucky to have you. So glad that you're doing the work that you're doing on the El Rey Network. And everyone should check their local listings Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays in prime time on the El Rey Network, The Maria Show. Thanks for joining us. Thank Thank you so much, Amy. Thank Thank you. you.